Hi, my name is James Riley from the Wisconsin Historical Fencing Association. And I'm Chuck Castellanos. Today we're going to go over the Sir Shao, uh, both the master cut and the associated plays found in Leif Dunau's Bell. So, Lichtenauer's art is based around the idea that there's a safe way to enter into a fight. Uh, the first master cut he teaches is the Zornhau, which is the only master cut that he gives you as a response to an incoming strike. All the rest of the master cuts are designed so that you can seize the initiative by attacking into an opponent's guard. The guard that they're in is going to determine the type of master cut you can use to safely enter the vine and uh, fence from there accordingly. So if my opponent is in Von Todd and <clears throat> I want to seize the initiative, I can strike in with the spare shell. Uh, if, if my opponent strikes at me before I strike my spare shell, then I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to uh, use the Zornhau that we discussed last time. Uh, if I do strike my spare shell and he responds with a cut, then what that's done is it's given me the vor, and um, I'm able to respond to his response according to, uh, to Lysenar. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show the Sverchow Sver Sver as it's done uh, correctly. And it, if we do this correctly, then we're going to hit our opponent, even uh, if he counters. As I strike my opponent, I'm going to step out with my right foot and strike in with a short edge with my thumb underneath. If he responds to that cut, what I need to do is I need to attempt to channel the force of his response into my crossguard. So if he cuts down onto my sword, I want to gain a mechanical advantage on him. He, I strike, he counters, and I want to channel the force of his response into my crossguard. And if I can get, if I can use my strongest, as hour says, um, to strike the spare shell, then I'm going to be in a position where I can mechanically control his sword and blow through his parry. Now, Lisa Nauer tells us that if our opponent pushes our sword aside in response to our spare shell, we execute our cut, and our opponent pushes our sword aside, and what we can do is we can strike another spare shot to the other side. Now, uh, Lee Snower tells us that we can do this, but immediately afterwards, he gives the first counter to the spare shot. And the counter is, is very similar to something that we've already seen, which is uh, the Zornhau. It's almost mechanically identical. And what Lee Snower is trying to accomplish is to gain a strong parry on his sword. We already know if we strike down into his cross guard, he's going to control, he's going to have mechanical advantage, and he's going to be able to control our sword through his cut. So as my opponent strikes, my, uh, strikes his ver shell at me, because I'm in Von Tag, I'm going to counter by falling with a long edge on his blade. So as he strikes in his ver shell, I counter falling with a long edge on his blade. Now, Lisa Nauer <clears throat> then goes on to uh, describe what you can do if the opponent decides to uh, strike a second spare shell, and if you counter with this sort of Zornhau-like action, it, it actually uh, becomes clear that that way of responding in the bind is not the best way uh, of, of fencing from the bind that's created by the spare shell. So the opponent strikes in uh, his spare shell in response to my montage. I strike down the long edge on my sword. As he strikes around his second spare shell, I can strike my own spare shell. And what I'm doing is I'm using my sword, uh, controlling the line the entire way around, and defending as I'm countercutting.
Um, the other thing, that, depending on measure, the other way that Lichtenauer tells us that we can respond to a second spare shell is if my opponent uh, cuts down against my sword, uh, spare shell, I carry with the long edge, falling with the long edge, similar to the Zornhau. As he goes to strike his second spare shell, I can catch him mid-strike and can control his hand. So we've, so we've seen that the, the optimal follow-up against an opponent who uses that zornhal like counter um, by gaining a strong angle on our sword, um, we've seen that striking a second spare shell isn't the best way to necessarily do that. Uh, what Lisa and I were, uh, tells us that we should do in that instance is something that makes a lot of sense when you think about it in terms of the way that we handle the zornhal. I see my opponent says von Tag. I go to strike my spare shell, he falls at the long end onto my sword. What he's done here is essentially made me weak in the bind. Now we know when we're weak in the bind, we have a variety of ways that we can respond. One thing we can do is we can dirt spike them, which isn't, doesn't seem uh, possible in the situation we've created, ourselves, created for ourselves. But another thing that we can do is we can do clearing around his sword. So again, if I go to strike my spare shell, he falls with the long end on my sword, I can double striking, this time cutting. Last time we, uh, we thrusted with our declaring action, this time we're going to cut. Now, if we're only going to do this if our opponent has really created a strong angle on our sword. And that means that we're not going to do this when he strikes the cross. If I strike my spare shell and he ends up hitting my cross, then he's given me mechanical advantage on, on that strike and I'm going to hit him there. If I attempt to do clearing around this, I'm not really dealing with the threat, and I'm also going to end up with his sword on my hands. So we've seen what Lee Shinara suggests to do with our Sarah Shao if our opponent pairs in a strong way. Uh, and they're the same things that he would suggest to do if our opponent paired in a strong way against our Zorn Orc that we covered in the last video. So now we're going to discuss what uh, Lee Sinara is going to suggest to do if our opponent pairs in a weak way. A little, uh, a little thing about strong and weak. Um, when my opponent strikes his very shell, I'm in Von Tag, he strikes his very shell at me. I can parry like this. Now it seems I have my strong and my opponent's weak. It seems as though I'm pairing in a strong way in this, in this situation. But I'm actually not. I'm not for two reasons. Because number one, uh, because my sword is, is out of alignment with my skeletal structure, my opponent's able to push my sword aside uh, uh, better than he would be had it been in alignment with my skeletal structure. The other thing is because I don't actually have an overbind, the force that he exerts as he's pushing my sword aside isn't going to be channeled into my cross. It's just going to redirect where my sword is. So as my opponent strikes his fair shell against me, he's going to carry like this. The best option that I have at this point is to attempt to push him off this way and strike around. That's what we call the weak parry in this video. Now, Lee Schnauer uh, would suggest to me tear in against something like this or a hand truck, and depending. But the, uh, the mechanics behind this fair shell make things a little bit complicated. Um, and, and particularly because the way that he asks you to exercise that fair shell uh, with, with uh, a sort of a driving force, getting that strong, get channeling that force into that strong, um, he, the mutarian in that situation isn't really practical. So at least now what said does is it shows us a, a throw. So as I strike my fair shell against my opponent, he parries in a weak way. What Lee Schnauer tells us to do in this situation, uh, particularly if I can't get the force into my cross to be able to strike or to thrust, uh, let's say he begins to lift my sword up over, I'm just going to rush in and throw my sword behind his neck, short edge along his neck, and my right leg in behind his left leg. Uh, 
Uh, now, Lichtenauer offers a counter for this, and the counter that Lichtenauer offers is going to serve as our primary counter if we're pairing in a weak way and our opponent is a Lichtenauer fencer, so he knows how to deal with it. Now, this counter basically neutralizes both the Mutirin, the uh, hand trucken, and now this throw with the short edge along the neck. My opponent throws his spare shell. I parry in a weak way. I begin to throw his sword off. He immediately rushes in behind me, short edge along the neck. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to lift my pommel up, and I'm going to thrust down along his sword, and then I'm going to strike with the short edge along his neck. This is what Lishnar calls Schnapp. And so <clears throat> we've seen that pairing in a weak way is not necessarily suboptimal. They're just a, a different set of techniques that we're going to have to use in order to uh, make sure that we're safe in that situation. One more thing about that. Uh, if my opponent sees I'm in Vantage, he strikes his very out. I parry in a weak way. He begins to push my sword aside. I yield to the pressure, pushing his sword up. He steps in, throwing the short edge along my neck, ready for the throw. I'm weak along this axis right here. He pushes me this way, I'm falling. And so as I throw my snap and I have to get strong in that direction, I'm going to do that by uh, executing my snap and then turning my hips in so that I'm braced along those lines while I'm striking with the short edge. Now, if I, if I go to strike at my opponent, um, and I see that I'm drawing out a strong parry, I can change my strike in that moment. So, <clears throat> I, I see that my opponent's in Vantag, I go to strike his Varek Shao, and I see that I'm drawing that strong parry out from him. What I can do is, in that moment, I can, I can strike my new clearing. So if I see that my opponent has effectively neutralized both my Zverschau and my Duplerin by pairing in such a way that makes it impossible for me to change, uh, change my attack mid-tempo uh, because he can counterwind, uh, then I'm going to have to do something differently. Now, he can do this by striking down onto the, the top third of my blade. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that as my strike lands, it's going to hit, the, hit his cross right at my point. The energy is going to be stopped there. But also, if he does it and lands his parry, and I begin my counter at this distance, he can just counterwind in the process and then uh, and, and inhibit me from executing that clearing. So what I'm going to do in that situation is if I see that my opponent I see that I've drawn him out to that strong parry that's made my strike, uh, basically nullified my, the effectiveness of my strike. I'm going to change my line of attack to the other side, drawing that strong parry. As I do, I'm going to immediately change my line on the other side. And so here I have uh, uh, two, essentially two fellers, uh, followed by a declare. And I can execute this all without ever touching the sword. Because what matters here is the strength of the bind. And the strength of the bind is determined by his body structure and his position on my blade, not necessarily whether the blades are even touching. So as I go to strike, I see that he's parried in a strong way. I bring my strike around. He likewise parries in a strong way again. And then I strike my nuclear. Finally, Lysenar gives us uh, uh, one cool thing that we haven't seen thus far, and that's a counter to the hand trucker. As, uh, as my opponent strikes in, he does his uh, Zverschau against me, I counter with that falling with the long edge in the Zornhaut type action. And then he begins his second Zverschau, I can catch his hand and throw him off to the side. But if I'm, if I'm being hand trucking, then there's one last ditch effort that I can do uh, to try and, and regain control of the fight in that situation, even if he has control of our, our, my arms. So I see my opponent's in Vampag. I strike my Zverkow. He falls with the long edge on my sword. 
I go to strike my second spare shaft, and he immediately catches me underneath with a hand cracker. And I'm going to change that strike to a deferring action. One more time. I strike my spare shaft, and fall to the long edge. I begin my second strike. He pushes me off. As he pushes my head over, I strike the good player. And so we can see how listeners use this, uh, this situation as a way to integrate more techniques than what we've done over uh, so far. But he's related them in such a way that we can, e we can see how the application is valid even if, uh, even if the position or the, the, the uh, position the defensors find themselves in came from a different source, i.e. the, the Zorn Howe or a separate master cut. Thank you very much. <laughs>